Hey guys, my name is Justice, and I'm here to give you a quick tutorial on how to visualize your neuron simulator models using Blender Neuron. At the end of the tutorial, you should be able to create a figure similar to the one you see here using your own neuron model. One thing to note before we start is that you should have already installed Blender Neuron on your machine. If you have not, there's another video that I made um, that you can click on that will walk you through the steps. Okay, so once you have that on your machine, go back here and then we'll begin. Okay, so the way this works is that I already have a model of neuron in neuron and uh, already instantiated. It's basically just a simple test cell, uh, and I stimulate in a couple of places to elicit action potentials. If you go to neuron and you do uh, shape plot, in my case, you'll see uh, the three cells that I have instantiated. They're the same ones; they're just side by side. Yours should have, you know, when you're using your model, make sure you can see something in the shape plot. Additionally, in the voltage plot, I have some uh, current clamps that are stimulating it. So if you run the model, you'll see that there's an action potential produced and all these three cells do it starting around 10 milliseconds. Okay, so now that you have a model in Neuron, let's go ahead and get that into Blender using Blender Neuron. So the way this works is that once you have your model in your uh, in blend, in the um, in Neuron's Python console, type in from Blender Neuron import Neuron start. And if you installed it correctly, then this line should work okay and there should be no problems. So at this point, everything you need to do is already done on the neuron side. All you have to do is start Blender. And uh, if you've already installed the add-on, you should see a tab all the way on the left side here um, that will um, show you the Blender neuron installed, okay? The status should say connected. I mean, it's able to talk to the neuron instance. And if you click expand on the cell group section, you should see one group. And then expand the cells in group, you should see that there's um, the cells that you have in your model. In my case, there's three of them. And you can just go ahead and immediately click import cell groups to Blender. And there they are. Uh, this is reading directly from Neuron, and it shows kind of what a Neuron looks like. Um, so what I'd like to do is basically um, make a rendering of it, which in which case just means generating an image. So the way this works is uh, there in Blender, there's the idea of camera systems. So what you want to do is you want to point the Blender's default camera to the scene that you're currently looking at through this design view. The way you do that is you click View, Align View, and they'll say Align Active Camera to View. You click that, it will basically show you the camera perspective's uh, point of view. This, uh, this the, the parts that are sort of uh, not or not highlighted or in the center are what the camera sees and the stuff is outside of its view. So what we want to do is we want to change the camera so that it actually sees everything. Um, so to do that, I hit N to open this little, um, uh, there's this button here as well, you can click to open this little tab here, and then there's a, a option called lock camera to view. So when you do that, it will, you can then use position the stuff, uh, all the cells that you wanna see within the camera's view. If you unlock it, uh, it will control like the actual view port size, and then I, I click on that again to lock it in, and so that when I zoom out, I'm actually zooming up and making the camera closer. Now, at this point, uh, if you hit in, there's a tab called the render, at the top over here. If you hit render, it'll actually create an image for it. Uh, so it's mostly just default stuff and uh, that you see. There's a couple of things I'd like to change about this. One is I don't like the background. I don't want the default renders gray background. Uh, and the other thing is I'd like to animate the activity so that I can see the action potential. All right, so to change the background, there is a tab called world. And I usually use two colors and blend them together. I And there's a horizon color, which I usually set to black. Because these cells are going to be mostly light color, I'd use a dark background, some sort of darker color background. So I'll use black and I'll blend it with um, like a dark blue color. Okay. At this point, uh, once you go back to the render tab and hit render button, the background will have changed the colors you set. Okay. Uh, that's still just a still image. You can embed this in like a publication or a figure or something like that. You just go by uh, an image uh, and then save as image. And it will let you put it wherever you want. You can also just take a screenshot if um, if you'd like. All right. Um, so now the next part is to do the activity animation. Let's see those action potentials actually propagated. So what to do that is you go back to the 3D view, which is the one you're seeing right now, and you click on the group that you want to uh, animate or show the activity of, and expand the section called cell group options. By default, uh, to basically conserve like how much information is exchanged between Neuron and Blender. Uh, their activity is not uh, recorded by default. And if you check this, basically when the next time Neuron and simulation runs, the, um, the different values that you're trying to animate will be recorded. In this case, I wanna see, so there's a couple of, first option is whether you wanna record from each soma of each cell, each cell or each section. We wanna do section because we wanna 
animate the potential as it changes from section to section. The other thing, the other options here is, for example, start recording and stop recording. These are in milliseconds. This allows you to just narrow down the range of where to collect data. So most of the stuff happens at between 10 and 15 milliseconds. So I will essentially tell it to just uh, record that range and maybe get a little padding. So I'll start at say eight milliseconds and uh, we'll stop at 15. This will make this quite a short and, and uh, makes it easy to work with, at least for this video. But you can just set these values to whatever you want. We are recording variable V, which is the SOMA V variable. You can change this to any other section variable that you want. Um, and the other thing is sampling period. Because this is an action potential, it happens relatively rapidly. We want to sample more than the default one time uh, once every millisecond. So we'll do it once every, say, uh, or 10 times each uh, millisecond. So every 100 microseconds, it will take a sample of the V voltage variable for all of the um, compartments, all the sections. I would, I would limit this just so that it doesn't slow down uh, too much. But for this purpose, um, doing it 10 times a second will work. The other aspect is that uh, we want to translate this into an actual video. And so as you know, videos are um, usually around 25 or 20 or 30 frames per second. In this case, so what I'll do is we want to slow this down so it doesn't go too quickly. So I'll change this to 10 so that each millisecond of the simulation will occupy around 10 frames. So set, set that to 10. This will stretch it out so that those action potentials can be really observed as they uh, take place. Um, OK, and the other things you can animate is the brightness as well as the color. We'll leave those as is. Uh, and then the scale is this is what allows you to map the values to different colors. So you can change this far right by just clicking on the, on the scale here or that, uh, whatever color you want. We'll just leave those as is for now. The other thing to watch out uh, for or to keep in mind is uh, this: these values get mapped, right? So for example, this 85 will become that color or minus 85 and that 20 will become this white color. I look at my animation and I, or at my simulation, I see that this is around minus 75 millivolts and this is around 34. So I wanna, and it won't go beyond those ranges. So I'll just uh, set them to that, um, to that range. So minus 75 and to uh, 35. Okay, at this point, we can uh, go ahead and re-import it again. This time it will run the simulation and collect that data. This was pretty quick. And to see whether it worked is, uh, remember we are starting we set our start recording at around eight milliseconds. And because we have 10 frames each second, that will translate to eight or 80 frames uh, is when it will start, which is around here. So 80 to 100 will be eight to 10. And that is when the action potential will propagate. Okay. If you can see that, basically, that's as I'm scrubbing through the, the frames, that is exactly what's happening. Okay. Uh, now there's these other frames, which um, in your case might be different. You can zoom in and out by just using the mouse wheel. And um, what I'll do is I'll narrow the animation to just the interesting parts. So for example, I'll start at something like 90 frames maybe. And uh, I kind of slowed down around 150. So I'll, I'll set that to 150, which pretty much corresponds to the, oh, did I miss a type that? Okay. It should say 90, 90, yeah, and 150. Okay. Um, and then when I hit this play button, it will replay just that range. Okay, cool. So at this point, we can then we can create a video or we can just do a quick preview of what a frame looks like. So find a frame where maybe this, each cell is halfway lit up or something like that. And um, and uh, what I'll do is I'll just make a rendering of that like this. Okay, so you can see that this is the part where the action potential is uh, at because that's where it uh, is most brightest. One thing that doesn't quite stand out in this case is that uh, the white, even though it is you know, as, bright as, as bright as it can get, you can, I can add a, another effect that will make this a little bit more, stand out a little bit more. So I'll go back to the 3D view and the Blender Neuron, the add-on has a, I've added this thing called a neon effect. Once you click that, it will add it for you. And next time you render, you will see something like this. So it'll basically emphasize those uh, bright, um, uh, brighter colors for you, okay? Um, if you are familiar with Blender, it's basically just a compositing node, which you can go in node editor and then click this compositing tab. And uh, this is where you can change the parameters if you'd like. Okay, we'll just keep it as is. So, and then let's make an animation of this. So everything's set up. All we have to do is just uh, render a video of it. So what I'll do is I'll go to the output tab in the render um, tab. I'll go to the place where I want to put it. I'll give it a name, say call uh, or cell VM. And that will be my video file. And we'd like it to be, I choose this FFmpeg video format. And then in encoding, it seems like the most compatible one is H.264 and MP4. So this will create an MP4 file. 
And once you can set other settings in here if you want, but for most purposes, this should be okay. And then when it's done, instead of hitting render, you hit animation. And this will render all those frames that we selected, that entire range, um, uh, into that video file. This will take, this, depending on how complex your model is, this might take a little longer or it might take shorter because it's a simple model. Either way, it will, it's, it's just a little preview. Okay, when it's done, you should be able to see it, which is, here it is, and that's what it looks like. Um, notice that the resolution is relatively low. Uh, I'm just doing that for speed. And uh, the way you can change that is if you go back to Blender under the Render tab, uh, under Resolution, you can change this 50%, which just means half of whatever these two values are. You can set that to 100, and it'll make uh, much larger videos and, and the resolution of the figure, too. So you want to change that before you're like ready for um, you know, actually embedding your figure until your final figure is ready. Okay, um, so this allows you to see the activity of each cell and um, and then animation of it. One thing I'd like to be able to change, for example, is uh, some people like to be able to show the, off the 3D structure of their cells as well as change the cells into different colors. If you have like a network model, you might want to show your principal cells in one color and your inhibitory cells in a different color. Uh, you know, if you have different types of cells, you might want to uh, color them differently as well. And it's uh, quite easy to do. All you have to do is, so you go back to uh, the 3D view, go back into Glen Blender, and what we'll do is, um, we will set the color for each cell by uh, placing them into different groups. But the reason is because Blender Neuron works with this concept of cell groups, and each cell group inherits the different display settings, and color is one of them. So uh, let's see, this is a green one. Let's make this a blue one, and that one a red one. So group zero, right now it has all three cells. What we'll do is we'll select group two, and we'll place uh, the second cell into it. One thing to know is that uh, each cell can only be in one group at a time, and this will enforce it. And then here, uh, we'll place that third cell into the third group. Now, if I look at different groups, you'll see that the cells are uh, distributed throughout the groups, okay? The other thing is, so now we want to, we, we've placed them into groups, but we still haven't set the color. So what it'll do is group one will be the one that's blue, okay? And currently, its color is just that initial green, but also it doesn't do the activity recording. So what it'll do is we'll just copy the settings from that first group that we created. Uh, this is, that was group zero, and to the uh, first group, which is the, um, the group that's currently selected. So we'll copy that, and you'll see that it, um, uh, you know, it copied over this video setting, or the recording settings. We'll do the same thing for, uh, let's make it smaller. Okay, so for group two, uh, we'll do the same thing. We'll copy it over. Again, the animation is there. And then what we'll do is we'll just simply change the color for group one, and then also for group two. First to group one, we'll make this blue, make it some sort of light blue here. Uh, and then for group two, we'll make this into uh, some sort of red, reddish kind of color. Notice we've also changed the scale too, so that at rest, it will uh, show um, the, the default color, the initial color. And at this point, we can just reimport them again, okay? Um, and it will show them as blue, reposition the camera a bit. And if I render this, you should see three different colors, yep. And uh, let's go ahead and make the animation. So this will go ahead we'll, and do that. Uh, and then we're, once it works its way through, we should see, yeah, the full animation of all the different colors. The other thing that this will not do, however, is rotation. So we will do that next. Again, uh, let's just do a quick preview. Yep, here it is. It's all different colors. Again, you can color it however you'd like. Um, all right. The next step is how do we uh, rotate these cells during the video? So the way this works is we simply use the Blender's built-in animation system to do that. And the animation system works by using the concept of keyframes. And they work by very simply by what they'll do is you take a particular time in the video. So let's say at the beginning of it, uh, you just fix the location or the rotation in this case of the cell at this frame by inserting a keyframe. So rotation for the cell is controlled by these parameters. I think I'm rotating around X axis, yep. Um, so what I'll do is I'll create an insert a free keyframe to fix it at zero rotation at frame 90. And what I want it to do is to have rotated a complete revolution by the time it hits frame uh, 150. So I'll go back to that frame 150, which is where I'm at right now. I'll set the rotation by 360 degrees. Okay, this looks identical. And uh, I will insert a keyframe there to lock it in place. And Blender will compute all the in-between steps so that when I zoom through or scrub through the video, you can see that it's rotating. One weird thing that I don't like about this is that it's sort of overlapping over here um, so what I'll do is, um, by the time it's around halfway, I want the cell to have moved away from there. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll just simply drag it over to the side here. 
and I'll insert a, a location keyframe in here. Again, I'll just insert it there. Um, one, and then I think I'll need to do that for to make sure I lock it in place at the beginning. So again, I'll same set the frame to ninety, and I'll save the location with the keyframe. So now it's rotating like this, but then it gets fixed there. So what you want to do is move it backwards again. So again, I'll move it back to where it was, and I'll insert at frame 150 another keyframe. Okay, so at this point, the cell will kind of uh, rotate around itself. If your cell doesn't have these weird, um, you know, neighbors like that, you you might be okay without having to do this location um, animation. Okay, so at this point, we should get something like this. Yep, we do. And if we go to an intermediate frame, yep, it's rotating. So uh, one last piece is I'd like to add some sort of um, blender. Um, allows you to add any sort of a 3D object that you like that gives you a sort of context of what's going on. So in this particular case, I'll add a simple electrode, like a pipette looking thing, so that it tells you uh, user or viewers where the current is being is coming from. In, in this particular cell, I'm stimulating it right at the stoma. For this cell, I stimulate it at this dendrite. This one's rotating, so I won't show it here, but uh, you can do the same idea um, by just following this. So what I do is I, I create a cone so the first thing to do is you left click on where you'd like to create this cone object. So you add, you click here, then you hit add mesh and then cone and it will place it in this location. What I can do is just rotate it around a bit until I can um, see it better, okay? And what I'll do is I'll scale, change the scale for the X and Y axis uh, to make it a little bit thinner and then I'll change the height of it by adjusting the Z axis, okay? We can do something similar. This is a precise kind of thing. Then I click G to move it around and I, I can press R to rotate it uh, with respect to my view. So I'll point it towards the Soma section and then you can copy and paste that same thing and um, rotate it again um, and grab it. You can also press S to scale it a bit and just place it over here. At this point, we should be good to go. Yep, there's the thing, the two um, iPads. Um, so we'll go ahead and render the final animation. And we'll embed that into the, um, the PowerPoint presentation. That's pretty much all you do is just drag and drop the file into the, um, the PowerPoint. And um, that should be it. So let's just do a quick preview. Here it is. All right. Uh, Maybe a little too fancy. <laughs> okay, um, so I'll open up my PowerPoint. I'll, let me get rid of this old version and then drop in this new video. So I'll just simply drag it over, reposition it, uh, resize it so it fits. Again, if you use that 100% um, option in the render, you won't have to rescale. It'll be pretty much the exact same size. And we'll send it all the way to back. Uh, the other thing is, so the scale, um, Let's, uh, yeah, at this point, okay, we can go back to the scale later, but the idea is that here it is in PowerPoint. Um, to add a scale, I simply take a screenshot of the scale that I'm using. So here is the scale. Basically, just take a screenshot of that. Uh, I know what the values were. So this is between minus 75 and 35. If I go back to PowerPoint, I can paste that over here and then just add some text boxes. Um, that shows you what the scale was. And um, if you want to repeat that for the other ones, you can do it this way. I just keep it in um, PowerPoint because you're probably most familiar how to do these kinds of things and you can customize exactly the look and feel how you want it. Okay, so at this point, um, you're able to show this presentation, which would look like this. I need to change my swap, okay. Um, and this is your presentation slide. So I think that looks a little better than the default view that uh, you'd have to use uh, if you just if you didn't use Blender Neuron. Of course, if you uh, create a figure like this, please put the a screenshot of Blender Neuron in your slide so that people know what you um, which tool you use to create this. Uh, there's also a citation, which is pretty much pretty much just my dissertation uh, that I, um, during which I developed this tool. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, check out my other tutorials.